Let's look at OpenStax College Physics Chapter 9, Problem 17. To get up on the roof, a person of mass 70 kilograms places a 6-meter aluminum ladder, mass 10 kilograms, against the house on a concrete pad with the base of the ladder 2 meters from the house. The ladder rests against the plastic rain gutter, which we can assume to be frictionless. The center of mass of the ladder is 2 meters from the bottom. The person is standing 3 meters from the bottom. What are the magnitudes of the forces on the ladder at the top and bottom? So we're given a lot of information. Let's uh, organize it. So we know that the mass of the person is 70 kilograms. We know that the mass of the ladder, I'll call that capital M, is 10 kilograms. I know that the length of the ladder is 6 meters. I know that uh, the base of the ladder is 2 meters from the house, so I'm going to call that x, so that is 2 meters. And that would be this x, I called the total length of the ladder capital L. Then we know that um, the center of mass of the ladder is 2 meters from the bottom, so I'll call that lowercase l, and that's 2 meters. So the ladder's center of mass is here, this is l. And I know that the person is standing 3 meters from the bottom, so let's call that D. So that would be this distance. Now, I've already crowded my picture. Let's get another one so that um, we can get a little bit more organized. So here we go. Um, all right. Now, um, we're looking for the magnitudes of the forces on the ladder at the bottom and top. So I will call those F bottom and F top. And we just want the magnitudes of those. All right, so um, before we continue, we have to realize that there will be forces acting in this um, uh, scenario that are vertical. So there's going to be the weight of the um, ladder and the weight of the person. There's going to be some sort of vertical force here, some horizontal force there, some other horizontal force here. So we have to determine our x and y um, directions. And I'm going to color code those. So I'm going to have x to the right and y up like that so that I can color code my, my um, uh, forces right away. So I know that there is the weight of the person, so I'm going to call this uh, W person. And then the weight of the ladder acts at the center of mass of the ladder, which was at 2 meters. So I'm going to call this W ladder. Then um, we have a normal force acting at the base of the ladder, and that's going to be up like that. I'm just going to call that force vertical. And those are the only vertical forces I have. Why? Because we were told that um, the rain gutter can be assumed to be frictionless. So that means that there is no force along the wall here, along the rain gutter. It's all a normal force. So that means that we have um, two forces that are horizontal in the x direction. There is the force of the wall here, or the, of the gutter, and there is the friction force that holds the ladder from slipping, so I'm going to call that F sub H for horizontal. So I have at the base of the ladder a horizontal force and a vertical force, and at the top of the ladder I have just a horizontal force. Now, how do these relate to um, my unknowns? Well, um, it turns out that the force at the base, at the bottom of the ladder, will be the square root of fh squared plus fv squared. And the force at the top is just going to be that force w that I um, have right here. So that's what we're looking for. All right, so we know that the ladder is in equilibrium, which means that the sum of the forces um, in x and y direction are zero. So I'm going to start out by saying sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. And in the x direction, I only have two forces. I have the force um, from the wall and that horizontal force. So sum of these two forces is zero. 
in the y direction, so I have sum of the forces in the y direction is zero. And in the y direction, I have more than um, two forces, I have three. So the one that's going in the positive y direction is the vertical force, and then I have the weight of the person, and I have the weight of the ladder. So sum of these three forces is zero. And I really can't um, get much information from this. I have too many unknowns. Uh, there is a third equation I can write, and that is sum of the torques. So I have sum of the torques is equal to zero. Um, in order for me to write some of the torques, I first have to pick some pivot point, some uh, axis of rotation, so that I can write the sum of the torques about that point. And the point I will pick is the bottom of the ladder. So I'll call that my axis of rotation O. So when I write some of the torques, it's going to be some of the torques about point O is equal to zero. So um, there are several different forces that will cause a rotation about this point. Um, force from the wall is going to make the ladder rotate in this direction if it were the only force that acted on the ladder. So I will have a rotation that's clockwise, and I know that a clockwise rotation is by convention negative. Then I will have um, the weight of the person acting on the ladder. So if this ladder weren't propped here and the person just started climbing on it, the ladder would fall this way. So it would have a um, counterclockwise rotation. Same thing with the weight of the ladder. Both of those would give a counterclockwise rotation. So this is counterclockwise and that by convention is positive. And this is also counterclockwise or positive. Now, the forces that act right at the pivot here, at the axis of rotation that I chose, will not contribute any torques. That's because the forces act right at the pivot, so there is no lever arm. And we know that torque is force times the lever arm, which is a distance from where the force is applied to the axis of rotation, and that distance is zero. So then the only three forces that do torque about this point are this force from the wall and the two weights. So I'll write this down. Um, I'll have uh, some of the torques is torque due to uh, weight of the person plus torque due to the weight of the ladder minus torque due to force vertical. And the sum of those three torques is zero. Now remember that um, the equation for torque is, um, for the magnitude of torque, is um, lever arm times um, force times the sine of the angle between them. So now we have to figure out what the lever arms are for all the different forces. So for um, this force, the vertical, the force from the wall, that would be my lever arm. It's the entire length of the ladder. It's the distance from where the force acts to the axis of rotation. Then the lever arm for the weight of the uh, person is going to be this distance here. And the lever arm for the weight of the ladder is going to be this distance. So I crowded my picture again. Um, and how do I... Um, write this down. How, how about we say uh, lever, arm, and force. Make a little table. So lever arm for FW is going to be the entire length of the ladder. Um, lever arm for the weight of the person is going to be um, distance D. Le lever arm is D. We were told that the person is at three meters um, from the, the end of the ladder. And then we have the lever arm for the weight of the ladder that is um, lowercase l because we were told that the center of mass of the ladder is two meters from the end of the ladder. All right, now we have to also figure out the angles that we're going to use. So um, let's 
look at these angles, we have that angle there, which I'm going to call theta. And I can do um, inverse cosine. So theta is inverse cosine of the adjacent, which we called x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is uh, capital L. So what I did here was knowing this x and knowing this length, I did inverse cosine to solve for the angle over here. That means that the angle over there is going to be um, uh, 90 degrees minus that. So here, if I do find cosine, I mean, if I find theta, which is inverse cosine of 2 over 6, I end up with cosine being 70.5 degrees, which makes angle phi um, 19 five degrees. So now to find each one of these torques, I have to multiply the force by the lever arm by sine of the angle between the force and the lever arm. So I have three different forces and I'm going to have to do that for each one of them. Um, I'm starting out with, in this equation, I'm starting out with a torque um, that the weight of the person exerts on the ladder. So I'm going to have to use the weight of the person times this lever arm, which is, um, I call it D in my diagram over here. So I have the weight times D times sine of this angle, which is angle phi, or 19 degrees. So let's write that down. Um, so I have weight of the person times the lever arm, which is D, times sine of angle phi. Then my second torque is due to the weight of the ladder itself. So that is the weight of the ladder times its lever arm, which I called L over here, uh, times sine between them, which again is phi. So I have a uh, weight of the ladder uh, times L times sine phi. And then the last torque I have to deal with is the um, um, force that uh, the wall exerts times the lever arm, which is the entire length of the ladder, or capital L, times sine of this angle, and that angle is angle theta. So I have a force of the wall times the lever arm L times um, sine theta, and that's equal to zero. So thankfully, in this last equation, the only thing I don't know is the force that the wall exerts. So I'll solve for that. So I have force wall is weight of the person, which is mg, then d sine phi, plus weight of the ladder, which is m, uh, uppercase m, g l sine phi. And we divide that by length of the ladder sine theta, so that would be, I'm going to leave out the units because I have enough stuff to write down. Um, so that's 70 times 9.8 times 3 meters sine 19.5 plus mass of the ladder, which is 10 times 9.8 times 2 meters sine 19. 0.5 divided by length of the ladder, which was 6, sine 70.5. And we end up with 133 newtons. So now we see that the force that the wall exerts is the force at the top. And that is equal to um, the horizontal component of the force at the bottom. So um, we know both of these then. And to find the vertical force, I can look at this equation and have F vertical is M plus uppercase M times G. 
So that is 70 plus 10, that's 80 times 9.8. And when I multiply those through, I end up with 785 newtons. But we are not looking just for the vertical component and the horizontal component. I guess I should write here, this is also equal to F horizontal. I am looking for the entire force at the bottom, and that is F is square root, F bottom is square root of um, F horizontal squared plus F vertical squared. And when I plug in the numbers, I end up with 790. 6 newtons. So there are lots of different little things that you have to do for torque problems. Um, be very, very systematic about it and things will work out well.